Hello everyone, welcome back for another lesson. So today we're going to talk about the mole concept. So this is a very important concept in chemistry, it's a pivotal one. Let's dive in. Okay, let's start with a question. How many chickens do you see on your screen? Now if you answer 12, you are correct. What other word can we use instead of saying 12? Yes, you're correct again if you said a dozen. So we could say there's 12 chickens or there are or there is a dozen chicken. So we have two words to illustrate the same number, 12 or dozen. Now this is an analogy that we will use in a second. But before, please tell me how many particles do you think there are in this cup of salt? Yeah, I know, it's difficult to evaluate, right? Because there's so many grains and each grain actually represents a cluster of molecules. So it's practically impossible to really guesstimate. So scientists had to come up with a way of illustrating or expressing how many particles there would be in a substance. Because atoms and molecules are so tiny, we can't really count them. So because there's too, too many and they're too tiny, scientists came up with the concept of the mole. So spelt like this, M-O-L-E, or also sometimes you see the abbreviation M-O-L. Now in class you might see the whole history of this concept and this word. I'm not going to get into it now. I'm just giving you the basics. So one mole of anything represents 6 times 0 to 3 times 10 to the 23 particles. So that's a lot of particles. It could be atoms, it could be molecules, it could be anything you can think of. The same way when we say 12 or a dozen, it could be 12 donuts, could be 12 elephants, right? It can apply to anything, it's just a number. It's the same idea here. One mole could be applied to anything. I could say one mole of elephants, one mole of donuts, one mole of houses, or one mole of atoms, okay? So it always represents the same number of things, whatever those things may be. Now, in reality, it's Mr. Avogadro who came up with this uh, definition. Um, through experiments and calculations, he was able to find this constant, and so we named the number after him. So this is Avogadro's number, 6.023 times 10 to the 23 things, or particles, or atoms, or, mo or molecules, sorry. Okay, so it makes it easier to express a number of particles because if we go back to this cup of salt, we can't say there's a gazillion uh, molecules of salt in there. The number would be too big, so instead we group those particles together and we call them moles. The same way if we have three dozen chickens, we know we're going to have 36 chickens. So rather than saying 36, we'll say three dozen. Now obviously chickens are bigger, but still you get the analogy. Okay, so one word to represent a lot of particles, makes things simpler. Now the concept of mole is used because reactions are based on the number of particles that react together and not their mass. So we're always going back to the number of particles that are present in a chemical reaction or in any given situation. So because we're talking about particles, that's why we need the concept of moles. So where do we get this actual mass for a specific substance? Well, the periodic table is going to help us with that. So in the periodic table, there is what we call the molar mass. The mass of one mole of carbon is 12.01 grams for any one mole. So what we use is grams per mole as a unit. So for carbon, the mass is 12.01 grams for 6.023 times 10 to the 23 particles or one mole of particles. Okay, so all of the masses that you find in the periodic table, they all represent the mass of one mole of that type of atom. Okay, so the molar mass of calcium 
would be 40.08 grams for one mole or per mole. The mass of neon, the molar mass of neon, 20.18 grams per mole, and for carbon is 12.01. You might have noticed that we use the symbol capital M and we use the symbol of uh, the actual atom as a subscript to show that it's the molar mass of carbon. Here we have the molar mass of neon and we have the molar mass of calcium. Okay, so this is the way we write it in an abbreviated way. What would happen if I had several atoms bonded together in a molecule? How do I figure out the molar mass of that molecule? Well, it's easy. What we do is that we add up the molar masses. So for example, I have the molecule MgO. Well, I'll take the molar mass of magnesium to which I will add the molar mass of oxygen as I did over here. So the molar mass of the whole molecule put together is 40.31. In my second example, I have magnesium, but I have two times chlorine. So I have three atoms bonded together, right, in this molecule. Two chlorines, one magnesium. So what I'm gonna do is take the mass of the magnesium to which I will add two times the molar mass of chlorine. And that gives me 95.21. And then if I have something a little bit more complex like C2H4, that means I'm gonna to need to take two times the mass of carbon to which I will add four times the mass of hydrogen as per my example over here. Two times 12.01 for carbon, four times 1.01 grams per mole for hydrogen. And it gives me a total of 28.06 grams per mole. So one mole of C2H4 has a mass of 28.06 grams. Okay, so that's how we work it out. Are based on the number of particles that collide together. But the tools that we use, namely the scale, that measures the mass of particles, not the number of particles. So we need a way to go back and forth between the number of particles that we have in front of us in our sample, in a given sample, and the mass of those particles. So how do I go from massing something on my scale and determining how many particles are present in that sample and therefore figuring out how much uh, output there will be to my chemical reaction? Well, there is a, chem there is a, a mathematical equation, as you see here, so we have a number of moles is equal to the mass of the sample in grams divided by its molar mass in grams per mole. Okay, so I've color-coded everything. So when we look at the abbreviated version with just the variables, the colors will match and it makes it visually easier to understand. So N is the variable, the letter that we use to represent moles small m is the letter or variable that we use for mass, capital M is the variable that we use for molar mass. So n, number of moles, is equal to mass of my sample over the molar mass of that substance. If you're not comfortable with this version, you might want to rework the equation and write it like this. So the number of moles times the molar mass of the substance will give me its equivalent mass. Okay, so that's the equation, or these are the equations we might want to work with. So let's look at an example as to how we are going to apply this concept. So if the question was, how many moles of sugar do I have if I have a mass of 100 grams of C6H12O6? So C6H12O6 is the chemical formula for sugar, the sugar that you have in your kitchen. I want to point out here that there is a dot at the end of the 100, meaning all digits are significant, right? So if you watch the lesson on significant figures, you will know that we put a dot at the end of a round number if all the zeros are significant. This is not an estimate, it's an accurate number. So it's exactly 100 grams that we are working with. Okay, so how many moles do I have if I have 100 grams of sugar? I will list my variables and I certainly invite you to list your information every time you solve a problem, even if it's a simple problem like this one with basically three variables and one step, one calculation. Because down the road, you're gonna have more complex problems and it really makes your life easier if you list your info first. Okay, so we have the mass of sugar. 
the mass of our sample is 100 grams, right? So we have 100 grams of C6H12O6. We need the molar mass of C6H12O6, so 6 times the molar mass of carbon that we're going to find in the periodic table, plus 12 times the molar mass of hydrogen, plus 6 times the molar mass of oxygen. It comes out to 180.18 grams. So we are looking for the number of moles, number of particles, in other words, that this represents. So we are using this equation, right? Number of moles is equal to the mass of the sample over the molar mass of that substance. Now, if I replace with the numbers that I have over here, so if I replace everything in my equation, I'm going to get 100 grams over 118 grams per mole. This gives me 0 0.555000 as an answer. Now, as you can see, I don't have any units because I'm not done. So two things I want to point out. First one is that my grams will cancel out. I'm left with moles or one over mole, and this is at the bottom of a fraction. So it's going to end up at the top. So I know that my units will be moles. So if you forget what the units are for n, well now, by going through this logic, logical process, you can find the units, they are moles. Next, we need to do significant figures. Yes, those darn significant figures are everywhere. So I have three significant figures, five significant figures. I need to keep the smallest number of sig figs because it is a division. So in this case, it's three. So zero here doesn't count. One, two, three. I drop all of these. I dropped a zero. That's the first digit that I dropped. That's the only one I pay attention to. So it doesn't change anything to this digit over here. So my answer will be 0.555 moles of sugar. Okay? So that's how you go about it. Next question. What if I want to know how many particles this represent? So how many particles are contained in this 0.555 mole of sugar? Well, if you remember Avogadro's number, Avogadro's number said that in one mole of anything, there are 6.023 times 10 to the 23 molecules. In this case, they are molecules. How many moles that I have? I just calculated that I had 0.555 moles of sugar. Since the moles are at the bottom of my fraction, they're going to go at the bottom of my fraction on this side as well. And now, all I need to do is cross multiply. So this times this divided by this will give me my answer. So 6.023 times 10 to the 23 times 0.555 divided by 1 will tell me or will give me how many particles or how many molecules in this case this amount of sugar represents. And it's 3.34 times 10 to the 23 molecules. Okay, so these are the two types of problems you might encounter uh, when we talk about moles. The first one being um, going back and forth between a mass and a number of moles, right? Going back and forth between small m and n, or having to convert a number of moles into a number of particles or vice versa. So those are the two types of typical problems that you'll encounter. So... I hope you're comfortable with this concept. As usual, if you have questions, don't hesitate and reach out. And otherwise, I'll see you around for your next lesson. Take care. Have a good one.